Hello, this is Mark L. White for Health Hacks, and today we have David Toman. He is the um, nootropics expert. And um, I guess the bet first question is, what is your definition of nootropics? Well, it, it, you can look at it from several ways. First of all, what do nootropics do? They increase your memory, they can boost learning ability, they can improve your mood and assist overall brain function. And so it's any substance that you use that can help your brain work better. Okay, okay. so uh, like I own a few companies and I have horrible ADD, horrible, I've mm -hmm. taken Adderall. Um, and I know that the nootropics, like there are a lot of natural nootropics. Now I drink coffee, is coffee a nootropic? Yes, it is. But that's not the solution for everything, is it? Well, it needs to be supported because in coffee, you're getting the caffeine and caffeine affects dopamine. And in the adult ADD brain or the ADHD brain, there's something wrong. There's something going on with the wiring when it comes to dopamine and acetylcholine. And so caffeine helps your brain use more dopamine. The problem with using caffeine is that it uses up dopamine that's not really there similar to what Adderall and Ritalin do. And the best way to support those and to get them working better is to make more dopamine and make sure there's enough dopamine in your brain so that Adderall or Ritalin or caffeine can work better. And you use 500 milligrams of L-tyrosine twice a day. What, what is that, L? L-tyrosine is a precursor to dopamine. It goes phenylalanine to L-tyrosine to L-dopa to dopamine. And I steer people away from using L-DOPA because it's unpredictable, it's hard to dose, it's what they use to treat Parkinson's disease. The safest way to increase dopamine in your brain is with L-tyrosine, and it works within about 20 minutes of taking it. And if you're using it to support ADD or ADHD with or without stimulants, Take 500 milligrams of L-tyrosine in the morning, and then another 500 milligrams at noon. And then if you find yourself crashing at 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, take another 500 milligrams at 3.30 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and you will not crash. I'm definitely going to try that. But um, that's, that's not the only thing you, can do, you should do, because there's a problem with brain cell signaling in the ADD brain, too. And that is largely acetylcholine. And what we have found is that if we increase acetylcholine along with dopamine, everything works better and uh, you can focus again. And it, su it supports the stimulants or you can use the stack without stimulants. So to increase acetylcholine, 300 milligrams of alpha GPC or 300 milligrams of CDP choline. Some people call it acetylcholine. But you also need L-carnitine because L-carnitine is a cofactor in the synthesis of acetylcholine, except that L-carnitine can't cross the blood-brain barrier, so we add an acetyl group to it. It's called acetyl-L-carnitine, or L-car. So we take L-car with alpha-GPC or CDP-choline to make more acetylcholine. And that supports the dopamine that we're raising as well. So your stack will be 500 milligrams of L-tyrosine, 300 milligrams of alpha-GPC or CDP-choline, and 500 milligrams of L-car. Now, how did you get, how did you get into this? Are you <laughs> like- is it Desperation. Like, so tell me about your story. I have been struggling with focus all of my adult life. And I've lived an interesting life. I've been to 45 countries and I've lived in several different countries. And each country that I ended up in, I ended up in some executive position with a company to support myself. But every time I had a performance review, you get one once a year, no matter what company you're with. David, you're a fantastic manager. You're really good with people. You're a great salesperson. People love you, but you've got to learn how to focus. And so I went out and I bought the books on how to focus. And I bought the books on how to be a good manager. 
and I didn't get it. I, it did not work. And it was just a practice in frustration for me for decades. And then 15 years ago, I met this gorgeous blonde on North Miami Beach, and we got married. And she saw what was going on. And so she decided, she introduced me to a psychiatrist up in Palm Beach. This guy sat me down within 10 minutes. He said, David, you're PTSD and adult ADD. And for adult ADD, he prescribed Ritalin. And Mark, the day that I started using Ritalin, it was like the lights went on in my brain. It was like magic. It was amazing. For the first time in my life, I could focus. And that worked like gangbusters for a couple of years. And then I started growing tolerant to Ritalin. And I panicked. And I'm going, there's no way. After I finally find something that's going to work and change my life like this, it's going to stop working. I don't think so. So now this is 12, 13 years ago, mind you. And so I decided, uh, what's going on here? If Ritalin is not working, what does that mean? How does Ritalin work in your brain? So I found out that Ritalin is a dopamine reuptake inhibitor. In other words, it prevents dopamine from attaching to transporters and receptors in your brain, just forcing more extracellular dopamine into your brain. And that seems to somehow help ADD and ADHD. And so if that's not working, what is, maybe I don't have enough dopamine, how do I fix that? And so I found out that L-tyrosine was a precursor to dopamine. I also found out that brain cell signaling in my research was a problem with ADD and ADHD. And acetylcholine is involved in brain cell signaling. I found out how to fix that with alpha GPC and LCAR. I went to the local GNC and bought individual supplements, put together a little stack and started using it. Ritalin started working again. And it's using the same thing to this day. Ritalin is working. I've never grown tolerant to it again. I don't crash late in the afternoon. And I have never had to increase my dose. Oh, that, that, that's amazing. Um, how does Ritalin differ from Adderall or from? That's a good question. Ritalin is strictly a dopamine reuptake inhibitor. Adderall, on the other hand, is a dopamine norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor, but it also does something to dopamine neurons, which forces dopamine neurons to put out more norepinephrine and more dopamine. So it works differently than what, what uh, Ritalin does. And so Ritalin is not an amphetamine. It's a separate class of drug on its own, and, but Adderall is considered an amphetamine. Why do you think, because I, I also I went to a psychiatrist who, who put me on Adderall, but why aren't psychiatrists talking about all these great supplements that are out there? Because they don't learn it in medical school. The medical schools are financed and supported by the big pharmaceutical companies. And so when these guys are going to med school, who's paying for it other than their tuition and their parents is the big pharmaceutical companies. So they're taught to use drugs and they are not taught nutrition. They're not taught about natural dietary supplements. They might spend one or two hours out of years of getting um, a, a degree. And so I've got lots of doctors and nurses and naturopaths and chiropractors on my list. Is there an easy checklist if um, somebody's struggling with ADD or they just want to improve brain function? Is there an easy checklist where they can see what they need to buy. And also, how do you know the quality? Because with supplements, it's so unregulated. Mm. How, how do you know what to get and get it from? That's two different questions. Let's take the first one first. Um, I've written articles on most well-known problems that people have with their brain. I've got an article, Best Nootropics for ADD and ADHD best nootropics for depression, best nootropics for anxiety, best nootropics for social anxiety. And I've also written, um, there's one article if somebody wants a quick reference, there's a thing called the um, best nootropics. In my, this is over at nootropicsexpert.com. It's in the main menu, it's called best nootropics. And when you click on that, 
it opens up a page that there's an, um, a box near the top, which I go on to explain throughout the rest of the article. But it kind of gives you a snapshot depending on what you're trying to fix. So if you want to improve processing speed, decision making, focus, flow, thinking, I've got uh, suggested nootropics for that. If you want to improve learning and memory, suggested nootropics for that. If you want to improve anxiety or depression, suggested nootropics for that. The same thing with energy and motivation and the same thing with brain repair and maintenance. So that's kind of like a quick reference guide there. Okay. Let, let me ask you about, because you, you talked about anxiety and I, you know, as, as a person who also owns businesses, I'm always anxious of future stuff that most likely will never happen. It's all in my brain. Um, you know, what's really good for a natural way to reduce anxiety? It depends on whether that anxiety is a biological issue or it's just a lifestyle issue. And if it's just a lifestyle issue, I would suggest using one of the adaptogens. Now, Anxiety is caused by different things in different people. There's no one pill solution to this. And I'll give you an example. Let's go back to uh, clinical anxiety, for example. A lot of times people are prescribed SSRIs, right, for anxiety, or they're, they're prescribed benzodiazepines for anxiety, and they don't work. Why don't they work? Because if it's ben ben benzos and it doesn't work, the problem hasn't got a pro person hasn't got a problem with GABA. If they're prescribed SSRIs and it doesn't work, the person probably hasn't got a problem with serotonin. It's something else. And there's a protocol that I walk people through on how to test each neurotransmitter to figure out which one is which one you possibly might be low in. Now, this is particularly um, this is relevant for anxiety. Depression is a whole other thing. And we can talk about that if you like. But the root cause of anxiety or, uh, disorders, if it is a neurotransmitter dysfunction, you need to figure out which neurotransmitter is causing the problem. It could be acetylcholine. It could be dopamine. It could be GABA. It could be glutamate. It could be norepinephrine. It could be serotonin. And how you find out which one it is, is you take a precursor and test it. So for example, acetylcholine, to increase acetylcholine, we'll use alpha-GPC. And we use alpha-GPC for one or two days and see if that helps. If that doesn't help, then we drop it and we move on to dopamine. And we try L-tyrosine for one or two days. If that doesn't help, then we move on to the next one, GABA. And we just take GABA for a couple of days and see if that helps, et cetera. So you just go through each one of the neurotransmitters and nine times out of 10, a person is able to figure it out. And then once you figure out that, aha, it's dopamine that is causing my anxiety, there's a dysfunction in dopamine, you can use L-tyrosine to increase dopamine, and then you can use other herbs and adaptogens and supplements that also affect dopamine one way or another. Like rhodiola rosea, for example, works as, as a monoamine oxidase inhibitor which means that it boosts the release of all the major catecholamines in your brain, dopamine and norepinephrine and epinephrine and even serotonin to a certain extent. So, but that wouldn't be a first line of defense if a person is truly clinically um, with serious anxiety disorder. They would want to increase that particular neurotransmitter and see if that helped. Do you remember that movie Limitless where uh -huh. they take the magic pill? Yeah. And with the magic pill, your mind works wonders. What I'm hearing and, and as you talk and thinking to myself, there's really not a magic pill. There isn't. There, there's a bunch of supplements that help, but people need a guide. They need. They really help. do. So yeah, they really what, do. What, and it's kind of cool because you're that guide. You're, you've gone through it. You help people. I know people can download your book and read about it, but do you also work with high functioning executives and help them through this journey? I do. I do several personal consultations every single week. 
that that's amazing. And you'll work with people who are on Adderall or have anxiety. Yes, I will. But how does it like? Do people have crazy expectations looking for that magic bullet, or how long does it take to get a guy um, where his brain is functioning well? After I spend an hour with them and find out exactly what's going on and provide a suggested stack for them to try, the majority of the time they start feeling re relief within the first couple of days. But if it's a serious problem, then it's the, this problem has probably been manifesting itself over decades. And so you're undoing decades worth of damage here and trying to repair it. You can't do it overnight. It's going to take a while, but you'll start start feeling better pretty pretty quick if we if we nail it if we get it right. And then as time goes on, if a person is diligent and consistent in using these supplements every single day, sometimes twice a day, sometimes three times a day, but if they do that, two or three or four weeks down the road, their brain is going to be working better than it has in a long long time now the nootropics themselves all of these nootropics you can get at whole foods or at gnc yes my definition of a nootropic is any natural substance that you do not need a prescription for so anything that you need a prescription for is not considered nootropic, in my opinion that's i call those smart drugs and I don't even, I touch on them just because they exist, but I don't write about them. I don't promote them. Um, modafinil, for example, Ritalin, Adderall, and all of their, all, all of their variants. Here, we're just talking about natural supplements that you do not need a prescription for that you can get at the vitamin shop or GNC or Whole Foods or your local health food store. How do you know, is there a certain brands people should be looking for? Uh, because... Yeah, let's go back to that one. That's a very good question. There are, and there's a lot of shenanigans going on in this industry because, well, a couple of things is going on. Um, specific, certain herbs, for example, that have really taken off and becoming popular. Rhodiola rosea, for example, is a classic example. Rhodiola rosea comes from Siberia. And the best rhodiola rosea is grown in Siberia. It's go grown in a cold climate. And since its popularity, there's been a, lo a lot of adulteration going on. And so some unscrupulous manufacturers have been putting something other than rhodiola rosea in the capsules. So that's one problem, adulteration. Another one is just not putting the stuff in the capsules that you say that you say on the label. And the way to a person comes to understand and know who the trustworthy companies are in this business. And they have someplace on their website that's easily accept, accessible that shows their testing program. So they're testing these, the raw materials as they're coming into the plant. They're testing the material during encapsulation and they're testing them as they go out the door and before they end up in the consumer's hands and they can prove it. And some of them even put a QR code on the label that you can scan with your phone. And that allows you to download a certificate of analysis, which is a third party lab that has tested that particular batch of supplements that are, and they will have, have, have a document. It's called a certificate of analysis or a C of A that shows exactly what's in that capsule. So that's one thing looking the bigger brands, for the most part, are relatively trustworthy. And by the big, bigger brands, I mean the well-known ones, like Bulk Supplements and Irwin and Now Foods and Thorn. Um, um, companies like this that have been around for a while. And they, they can prove their testing programs, every single one of them. The other thing I have people look for is... I want purity in my supplements. If it says that there's L-tyrosine in that capsule, all I want in that capsule is L-tyrosine. 
I don't want silicon dioxide. I don't want magnesium stearate. I don't want silica. I don't want red number three and yellow number five and all of the other garbage that these some of these many most a lot of these manufacturers include in these supplements and they put them in there for a variety of reasons. They use magnesium stearate, for example, as a flow agent because it's, it prevents the powder from clumping up in capsule machines, right? So it stops the capsule machine. And silicon dioxide is a colorant. And they also use ingredients as a preservative. Or they make it uh, use a, an ingredient to make it smell better or to change the color of it so it looks better. Every single one of these things has been shown in clinical trials is shown to be toxic in some way. And it, and you do not need to use this stuff when you're making, when you're making supplements. And I found this out by working with um, very, like uh, Optinutra, for example, in, in England, who make a performance lab in MindLab Pro. If you take a look on their label, they tell you the ingredients that are in the capsule. And when you look at the other ingredients below the supplements facts label, the only thing that's there is the capsule. There's nothing else. So that's when I knew that you could actually make this stuff without using all of this other garbage. And so the big manufacturers are starting to catch on now too. And you, sometimes you have to hunt for it because somebody like Now Foods uh, will have two or three or four versions, versions of the same thing. And one of them will be pure. On your website, do you make it easy by listing brands that you know are pure and that are of best quality? I Some. And then I've also written a couple of articles that teach people how to do their own evaluation and how to, how to quickly discern quality. So another subject, and I, I just want to get your opinion on it. I read this article over the weekend about a billionaire who said that the secret to his success is hallucinogenic mushroom psychosilvin mm -hmm. and once he went on a trip he said everything fell into place and that he was a much deeper thinker and we know that they're decriminalizing and legalizing um hallucinogenics yes what, what what's your take on that and do you think that's going to be the next big thing and is that going to help it's, I don't think it's going to be the next big thing. It's absolutely definitely going to help. And there's a place for it. It's not something that you can do every day, obviously. No. no. Um, but these hallucinogenics are something that seem to have been proven effective to help people hit the reset button. And oftentimes they hit the hit the reset button so that they're in a in a much better place after they do it. But it really has to be done under the supervision of some a professional, somebody that knows what they're doing, depending on what that what what that ingredient is. It's either a doctor that's been trained in this, or it's a shaman that has been trained in something like ayahuasca. And and when you're doing these things there is very, very close supervision and that there is very, very strict quality control in making sure that people are not using other, they're not on other medications prior to doing this that are contraindicated with that hallucinogen. So definitely not recommended to do it recreationally, but do it no. under the care of a doctor in conjunction with everything else. A doctor or some type of a professional that that knows what they're doing. Yeah, no, I, you could really, really hurt yourself by, if you don't do that. No, I, I agree, but I, I, I have friends who are texting me, hey, let's do a mushroom trip. We're gonna get smarter. And if you do a mushroom trip, do it with a shaman that knows mushrooms. And the right person will have you sign a paper before you do it. So that, and, and saying that you are not taking SSRIs, you're not on MAOIs and you haven't done it for the last two weeks and exactly what supplements you're taking. Mm -hmm. the, right, the, the right person that knows what they're doing is going to do that. And that was, that's the only safe way to do it.
Yeah, it's hard though to find trusted people out there that can guide you. Mm, it's getting easier. I mean, with the internet and social media, the way it is today, that if a person really wanted to find somebody that could, a guide, they can find them. Where do you think, it, what is, um, you talked about adaptogens. What exactly is an adaptogen? An adaptogen is something that helps, um, okay, let, the word adaptogen is derived from the, the Latin word adapter, which is, which is to adjust or to adapt. It was first used by a guy named, a scientist and a Soviet physician named Nikolai um, Lazarov in 1947. And he was joined by Dr. Israel Breckham. And the, these guys are working as a team and they were on the search for botanicals with adaptogenic proper qualities. And so the definition of adaptogen um, includes metabolic regulators of a natural origin, which increase the ability of an organism to adapt to environmental factors and to avoid damage from other such factors. So in other words, they're, they're regulators. They're help, they help regulate your system and help balance things out. So adaptogens alone won't get you to that place that you want to be. You have to do it in conjunction with other... It, it, sometimes they do. It depends. It depends on, it de depends on the person and the, and the nature of what's causing their issue. Um, I'll give you an example. A few months ago, I was working with um, an executive in Silicon Valley. And this guy's a venture capitalist and really, really successful. And just, he said, David, my problem is that everything is going great until I get in front of a crowd. And then I freeze. Never fails. It could be in a stadium. It could be a group of, um, in a boardroom, but I just freeze. And this is a really, really successful guy. What do I do? And so I had him experiment with different adaptogens. And one of them was lemon balm. And I got an email from him a couple of days later. He said, David, I got some, the lemon balm that you suggested. Problem solved. That, that, that's amazing. <laughs> that, that, that's, you, you know, it's funny when I'm thinking through, like I used to sleep like a baby. Um, the day... I stopped sleeping well was the day I got my iPhone in 2008. Hmm. I, I found myself in bed, like searching the internet. But before you'd have to go to the computer and yeah. you know, all the setup. And, you know, I have three kids that have grown up on social media mm -hmm. and their attention span is like this. Like I could not imagine me growing up with social media, like, and I think we're creating like this whole generation of we people are. Who, who, who can't pay attention, which I guess it begs the question of what should we be doing in our lifestyle that helps us focus and helps us improve brain function? I think the only thing that we can do at this stage is you certainly cannot stop people from using social media and you can't stop people from using electronic devices. That's not going to happen. And so given that, then the best thing a person can do is just to support their brain function and to keep it healthy. And um, there's a, one of the problems that they've been finding with electronic media is EMFs and seems to be disrupting mitochondria. So just take a couple of supplements that boost brain-derived nootropic factor to keep mitochondria in shape so that you're not suffering from mitochondrial dysfunction. And then take some supplements that help make adenosine triphosphate in mitochondria. And then if there is a problem with using this media and it's causing a problem with a neurotransmitter, use a, a, use a precursor to support that neurotransmitter. You have to find figure out which one is the problem mind you, whether it's dopamine or acetylcholine or GABA, but we're finding that it's different in each person. 
I mean, there are generalities, of course. I mean, there could be a billion people in this world that have got a problem with GABA, and there could be a billion people in this problem with the do problem with dopamine, and a billion people with a problem with acetylcholine. But what's your problem? That's what you have to figure out. And instead of, instead of walking into the vitamin shop and just kind of like staring blankly at this row after row after row of supplements, go to nootropicsexpert.com, look at the guides that I've written, get my books, and, and read about how your brain works and what the different problems are and what the causes are. And so go into this thing, um, you know, with your eyes wide open. And say okay i want to increase i want to improve flow i want to go into the flow state better or i want to i want more energy or i need to improve learning and memory or i'm worried about brain repair i'm worried about brain damage for whatever reason it could be traumatic brain injury from 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 school or an elderly person that tripped over something and whacked their head whatever um, but what is it that you're trying to support? What is it you're trying to fix? There is supplements that will help do that. There is no one pill solution, that's period. Helpful. There's none. And I'm actually, as soon as we're, we're done, I'm going to, and I did read through your website before, but this, I mean, this is, to me, this is fascinating. Um, diet is also, I think, something that I noticed when I would eat red meat, I, I, I switched to a plant-based diet maybe 15 months ago. Mm -hmm. But if I ate a burger for lunch, yep. I, I was done for the rest of the day. I, I knew like I had such a brain fog. Um, what would you recommend a person who's struggling with ADD or with any type of, uh, of brain function? Is there a diet that you would recommend Not a specific named diet. Um, what I did was I just cleaned things up and stopped eating processed food, cut down on sugar as much as I possibly could, and I don't eat white things. Um, now, you can be a fanatic about this and just never eat bread again for the rest of your life, but you don't have to do that. Just for the most part, you know, six days out of seven, don't eat anything white. Don't eat white bread. Don't eat white rice. Don't eat pasta. Um, and rather than um, getting processed food and eating that, get yourself a, a Ninja air fryer and learn how to cook at home and you can make dinner in 20 minutes faster than you can go down and pick something up at, at a, at a restaurant. Um, so just clean up your diet. I, I heard it's from somebody thing. that if you look down at all diets, they, they said that just, it comes down to four words, no sugar, no grains. Pretty much. You know, you stay away from sugar and grains. <laughs> you work, we're good. Um, and then they'll write a 300 page book to, to sell the book, but, yeah, yeah, but Whole that's, philosophy is no that's, sugar, no grains. Yeah, but then you really have to think about what is a grain and what has got sugar in it. You know, it's it's around, it's all over the place. Most of the stuff sold in the supermarket falls under those two categories. Now, if somebody wants to do a consult with you, they would go to nootropicsexpert.com. Uh -huh. After downloading the book, they would set up a consultation with you. If they want, sure. And then they would work with you on a, generally, are you working with people on a long-term basis or are you just getting them to a point where they're feeling better? Typically, it's a one-off. They book one consultation with me. I found out, they sent ahead of time, they send me the list of supplements that they're using right now, the list of medications that they're using right now, the list of their health problems that they're dealing with and what their goals are, what they're trying to achieve so that I can prepare a little bit before we call, before we talk. And then once I get them on the call, I spend an hour with them going through everything that they've sent me and what, what my recommendations are for them to achieve their goals. And probably 80% of the people I never hear from again. Or if I do, it's in the comment section on my YouTube channel or in the comment section on the website. A very few people do a follow-up consultation like six weeks down the road, and that's typically just to tweak 
what I suggested that they do in the first place. So, so I, I really admire a guy who created his own category as an expert. Are, are you still running companies or is this your main passion or your only passion right now? This is the only thing I've got time for anymore because it's growing, just growing exponentially. It's my audience has gotten so big that I just, I can work till eight o'clock every evening and never get everything done. And how long have you been doing this? Well, I, this Nootropics expert I founded five years ago. Well, that's, that's amazing. Um, but yeah, I, I could go on and on, but um, I want to be respectful of our time. Where are we going with this? What do you see as the next um, the next place? Or is it? You know, it, there are certain things that um, I'm doing a roundtable with NutraFoods in Europe, um, leading a roundtable discussion with manufacturers about um, long haulers and people that are coming up that had COVID and that are now experiencing things like brain fog. That's a um, huge problem. Yeah. So to answer your question, it kind of like depends. Um, just in general, over the last couple of years, the word nootropic has become better known. Thanks to guys like me, I think, just because we've been, I've been talking about it so much. And word spreads really quickly on social media if somebody finds something that works for them. And so the more people are becoming aware of the word nootropic, you're finding some of the big supplement companies that ne they, they've got, they've sold brain enhancing supplements in the past, but now they're putting nootropic on the label. People like Irwin Naturals, for example, and Gaia Herbs, and they're calling something a nootropic, which is the first time. And that's happened in the last year. Um, so the, the brain health and cognition category in the dietary supplement market is one of the largest categories now, and it's going to continue to be one of the largest categories. I had a friend who recovered from COVID about a year ago, mm -hmm. and she still says her brain does not function. Yeah. She was very was very sharp she's now not as sharp what is there a certain well first of all do we know why covid is causing that and is there certain supplements that we're just learning what is causing that um i've been i'm on several lists and i've been collating clinical studies that have been coming in um with reports um and they're finding that um Inflammation is a big problem. And inflammation increases oxidative stress in the brain and oxi increased oxidative stress uh, kills brain cells or causes them to be dysfunctional. And so there are supplements that you can use to tame oxidative stress and keep free radicals in check. And there are supplements that you can use to boost nerve growth factor and brain derived nootropic factor. So you can replace the stuff that got damaged or killed. Um, and, but this is very much a very steep learning curve. We're just finding out from people in the medical community that people, that people are coming back to their doctors and saying, I'm dealing with this and the doctor is investigating. And so we're slowly starting to figure this thing out. Do, do you think big pharma is going to start getting more involved in nootropics? And will that also affect our ability to purchase a lot of these supplements? They're trying to, um, they're trying to, and one example is one of my favorite supplements is vinpocetine. I use vinpocetine. Vinpocetine is a synth uh, th synthetic derivative of the lesser periwinkle plant. And it is sold as a prescription medication in places in countries in Europe. I, but in, here in the States, it's not. It's been sold for decades as a dietary supplement. And one of the big pharmaceutical companies got in touch with the FDA over a year ago and said, we don't want these guys to sell vinpocetine anymore because we want to make a drug out of it. And so you can't buy it on Amazon. You can't buy it at Swanson. And uh, there's only like, one company that still produces it. Um, that's, so that's one example of them trying to 
bully their way into this. They can only be so, so successful at that because this market is just so big and the community is so big that they have got this huge, huge army to confront if they try to do too much of this. Um, other ways they try to do it is you might have seen the ads on TV. One of the things that I've learned is uh, the human brain, we need a thousand milligrams of DHA every single day. Your brain is 60% fat, and most of that fat is DHA. And you can't D get DHA from a fish oil, or you can't get it from an omega-3, because it's just, there's not enough of it there. So you have to look for a DHA supplement. Now, a couple of the pharmaceutical companies have come up with omega-3 drugs that they're promoting. I saw that. Yeah. And so they're, that, they're also coming at it from that angle. They're going, if we can't beat them, we're going to join them. And we're going to try to sell drugs in this category too. But if you take a look at the drugs that they're producing, eh, they, don't, they don't cut it for what we really need. What, what I'd like to do, is, I think this, first of all, this is amazing for me. I, I would love um, sometime soon is just schedule a, a consultation with you for okay. myself and then maybe have you back on the show in a month or two and I can talk about what I've experienced because I, I do struggle with this and um, you know I, I would love to find a solution. Let's do it. It sounds great. Oh, David, I, I appreciate this. This is really good. So um, it's very easy to find David uh, on all the social media channels, but the best way is to go to nootropicsexpert.com. Definitely download the guide. It's it's a very comprehensive website. If somebody's coming here, what's the best place for them to start? Um, there's a there's a search function at the very top on the right hand corner. If they're dealing with any particular problem, whether it's ADHD or anxiety or depression or OCD or um, uh, epilepsy or whatever their issue is, just put it in that search function at the top and hit search. And they'll end up with two or three or four or five pages of stuff to read. Um, so that's one way to do it. Another one is um, every single article and post that I've got on that website, there's an invitation to download for free. One of my books called Secrets of the Optimized Brain, it's almost 100 pages. And it's that 100 pages has got, I think, 92 separate nootropic supplements with a brief description of it in there, um, what it is, what it's used for, and what the recommended dosage is. And then if a person, want, uh, my book is head first, is almost 600 pages. It's like a user's, user manual for the human brain. They can get and, that on your website or at Amazon? Um, it's not available on Amazon yet. You can, all, you can get it on the website. Well, I'm going, I know what I'm going to do after this is just get, <laughs> get your book. Um, you've been a great guest. You're here in Miami? Yes. Oh, right. Right in our neighborhood. Love to Excellent. hook up with you one day. Thank you so much for your time. That was My very pleasure. nice to have you on the show. Thanks for inviting me. I appreciate it.